I'm Adelaide, I have ADHD and I'm autistic and we're going to do an ADHD test today just to see if it says that I've got ADHD. Okay, okay, right. So I'm on a website called adhduk.co.uk. Step one of two, it, apparently I'm 50% complete, but I'm not. I don't understand why that says I'm 50% complete because I'm, I'm not. <laughs> Question one, how often do you have trouble wrapping up the final details of a project once the challenging parts have been done all the time? I've never finished projects. I get bored like once I've done the good stuff. So we're just gonna say very often. How often do you have difficulty getting things in order when you have a task that requires organization? I don't know because it really depends on the task and the type of organization that it requires. Could you be more specific, please? I'm gonna go with sometimes. How often do you have problems remembering appointments or applications? Always, every day, every time. I don't think I've ever remembered an appointment just off the bat. I think I've always had to have had an alarm of some sort. When you have a task that requires a lot of thought, how often do you avoid or delay getting started all the time? How often do you fidget or squirm with your hands and feet when you're sitting for a long time? I'm literally fidgeting with my hands right now. <laughs> how often do you feel overly active and compelled to do things like you were driven by a mortar? I hate that because the way that that is worded is like as if I need to be getting up and doing things all the time, which I do need to be like doing and do things all the time. But I think for me, it's more like internally my mind is racing. I feel like my mind is, is driven by a mortar. And I sometimes, oh my goodness, especially like sometimes I'll be laying in bed and I'll be like, oh, where's my passport? I then cannot sleep until I find my passport and I will have to like get up and look everywhere for it. I'm just gonna put often. Please answer the questions below rating yourself on each of the criteria shown on the scale on the right side of the page. Oh, it's just the same as the last time. How often do you make careless mistakes when you have to work on a boring or difficult project? I'm gonna let you guys into a secret right now. For the longest time, I thought I was dyslexic. I, in high school, I will absolutely never ever ever forget this. So I was in geography and I've like rushed through my exam obviously to get it finished and I've got plenty of time to spare so I'm just doodling on the back of my exam paper and it comes to marking them and then I get ridiculed by the way ridiculed in front of everybody they said my dead name but I'm just gonna say Adelaide for the sake of this but I was like Adelaide could you please stand up come to the front of the class please and I was like why no thank you and then they proceeded to make a mockery of the fact that I wrote Eggland as an answer for something when I in fact meant England I just forgot the N and I would always make really careless mistakes with my spelling all the time and I had a lot of difficulty reading because I would skip words when I was reading and it felt like I wasn't able to like actually focus on the words I was reading and in college I got assessed for dyslexia and I was told I have very, very mild dyslexia. And I was like, okay, fair, makes sense. That's why I, I struggle reading and stuff. I'm not dyslexic. I've got ADHD and the dyslexia is not a thing. And my I talked about this when I was being diagnosed uh, about being dyslexic. And they were like, I don't think you're dyslexic. And I was like, no, I am. But it turns out I'm not. And it is basically just my brain going too fast. And I would like skip over words when I was reading but it's because of my ADHD that I would do that or I wouldn't really take in what I was reading or I'd like not be able to like understand how to pronounce words and things like that. And then obviously like the spelling mistakes and stuff, but that came from rushing, but I wasn't rushing. It's just my brain was rushing. Really, really silly curlers mistakes. That was a very, very long winded side note. But yeah, I thought I was dyslexic for the longest time. Turns out I'm not. Okay, okay. Next question. Which one have we just done? Number one. Have we done number seven? There's this pigeon outside. It keeps like flying out of the tree, into the tree, out of the tree, into the tree, out of the tree, into the tree, but like in a pattern like this. How often do you have difficulty keeping your attention when you're doing very boring or repetitive work? I don't feel like I do very often. I think it depends again on the task. Yeah, but if it's boring, like if I'm genuinely not interested in it, I don't really pay attention. Like if I'm doing something that I don't genuinely find interesting, I find it really difficult to maintain my focus. For example, like I had, a, I have a friend who wanted to like do something, like wanted to do a jigsaw with me. And sometimes I love jigsaws, right? It just dep it depends on how I'm feeling. <laughs> but if I just wasn't in the mood to do a jigsaw, I'd be like, yeah, 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 let's do it. 
but I would be so freaking bored and my brain would be going on all kinds of different like walks and I probably wouldn't really complete very much of the jigsaw. But the thought of me wanting to do it with you is there. It's just my brain doesn't really like to participate in the actual activity. How often do you have difficulty concentrating on what people say to you, even when they're speaking directly to you? <gasps> all the time, all the freaking time. I have auditory processing disorder. So <laughs> sometimes people will talk to me and I, honest to God, think they're speaking in another language to me. I have no idea what words have just come out of the mouth. I do not know what they're saying to me. Like, you really need to repeat that. But then, oh my God, they'll just repeat like the last couple of words of the sentence. And I'm like, babe, no, stop. I need you to repeat everything that you just said. I know that this conversation has been an hour long, but I need all of it repeating again because I genuinely did not process any of it. I'm having a conversation with someone. This is the other person, right? And we're like having a conversation. By the way, I can't hear what people are saying if I'm looking at them. I don't know what, if I'm looking directly at you, just know that I'm not listening to anything that you're saying to me because I can't hear you because I'm looking at you and I'm too busy focused on how I'm looking at you and where I'm looking and how long I need to be looking for and how to look normal while I'm looking at you. But if I'm not looking at you when you're talking to me, I'm listening. So like, for example, okay, I'm looking at you right now. If we're talking, I'll do this. And that's the only way I can listen because I need to block everything out. So I need to like look away and I need to zone out with my eyes and like really focus in on what's being said to me to actually hear what you're saying. And if I'm looking at you, I just can't hear you at all. And it just sounds like mumbo jumbo. It's not, it's not real. Don't know what you're saying to me. But the amount of times that I've had to say to someone like, I'm so sorry, I was not listening. Can you say that again? I'm going, oh my God, I can't just do the quiz, can I? I just keep going off, I'm so sorry. What question was that? Was that number nine? I'm gonna stop going on tangents, I'm so sorry. Uh, how often do you misplace or have difficulty finding things at home? All the time. My mum, oh my, I'm gonna go up on another tangent. <laughs> When I was younger, there was like a running joke in the family. And I say a running joke, I would genuinely get into trouble. I was not allowed an umbrella because I just lost them all the time. Like I was allowed my own umbrella. But if I lost my umbrella, my mum was like, no, have my umbrella, you're gonna lose it. I'm like, I'm not gonna lose it, I promise. Every time I would lose it, every time. I'd leave it on the bus, I'd leave it in school, I'd leave it in college, I'd leave it at work, I'd leave it wherever I took the umbrella. I left the house with it, did not come back with it, ever. Not once have I ever had an umbrella for longer than like a week. How often are you distracted by activity or noise around you? Very often. Oh my God, if I'm trying to do work and someone's talking to me, I will not do that work. I will not do that work. I have zero self-control when it comes to that. Don't speak to me if I'm busy because the task that I'm doing, I've probably been putting off for weeks and now I'm finally doing it and you're going to speak to me. So now I'm going to have to redo this task in six weeks time when I've mentally prepared to do the task again. How often do you leave your seat in meetings or other situations when expected to remain seated? Never, but that's because I know I'm not allowed. And this, the way that this question is worded is so bothersome to me because not everybody would get up and move about, but that's not to say that they're not uncomfortable and that they don't want to do that. Everyone in a meeting wants to get up and leave, okay? Everyone in a meeting wants to get up and leave. The difference being, is that I cannot sit, um, you're not gonna be able to see me, but I cannot just like sit in a chair. It doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel natural. It feels so uncomfortable to the point where like, I need to move. I need to keep moving. I need my body to keep moving. So I'll be in meetings if I'm in meetings or in school and stuff like that. And I'll constantly be, because I want to get up and move, but I can't. If I, I have to sit in a way that isn't seen as a professional way to sit down because that's what's comfortable for me. This is what's comfortable for my body. My body doesn't feel comfortable sat in a chair like correctly. I don't ever leave my seat, but I want to. So I'm gonna put sometimes. How often do you feel restless or fidgety? Literally all the time. How often do you have difficulty unwinding and relaxing? Have time to yourself. If anybody actually finds out how to relax, please let me know. Because I don't think I've ever relaxed a single day in my life. Like, ever. When people say like, oh, relax your shoulders. What? what do you, are they not meant to be like this all the time? Like, constantly stressed. I always wonder why I've got headache and backache and my neck always hurts. It's because I'm carrying 29 years worth of stress just here all the time like this i don't know how to relax i don't know what relaxing is because if i'm not doing anything i just feel guilty if i'm just like sat watching tv relaxing 
to the untrained eye, I look like I'm relaxing because I look like I'm just sat there watching TV. When in actual fact, I'm sat there looking through the TV. I don't know what is going on on the TV because I'm not watching it. I'm looking through it and my brain is like, you really should be doing this. You should be doing that. This is a mess. You need to do this. You need to do this. Why are you not doing this? You are so lazy. You really need to be doing this. Get up and do this. Why are you not doing this? And that is just all day. Someone will say to me, oh, what have you done with your day? And I'm like, oh, nothing really. I'm like, oh, I had a nice rest day. No, I, I didn't. Don't ask me how it works or why my brain works that way. It just does. It's the ADHD. How often do you find yourself talking too much when you are in social situations? This is a mix. Again, this question, the answer is a mix because it, it really depends on the type of social situation. I have this issue where I don't, un I don't understand social cues. I don't understand in a conversation when I'm allowed to talk or when it's my turn to talk or if I'm even involved in the conversation, unless somebody directly says to me that I am involved in the conversation or asks me directly for an opinion. I just don't think that I'm involved in the conversation and I, I feel like I'm meant to just be standing here listening. I don't understand if I'm allowed to like come into the conversation, I don't understand. But on the flip side, I have a very impulsive brain. I have combined ADHD and I'm extremely impulsive with a lot of things. I have a lot of trouble with making impulsive decisions and stuff and end up getting myself into quite a lot of trouble. But with that, if I get a thought in my head, I'm, I'm, we're in a conversation, even if I'm not involved in that conversation and I have something to add, I don't know when is an appropriate time to add it. And I panic about when I'm allowed to join the conversation. But then on the other side, my ADHD is like, just say it now as soon as it comes into your head. And I'll just blurt it out. And I'll interrupt people and I come across as really rude because I'm interrupting people, but it's not that I'm interrupting you. And I don't really care whether, now whether we talk about what I've just said. I just needed to get it in, like, out of my mouth so it would get out of my head. Otherwise I'd forget. And then I would be really upset and it would really bother me until one day I'd remember what I was meant to say. And then it'll just really play on my mind. So I, I just have to say it. And then it's fine. Like, we can go back to the conversation name. I'm sorry, I just needed to get that out. And it comes across like I'm being rude or like I'm trying to change the conversation or I'm trying to make the conversation about me. When that isn't the case, it's just my, I have ADHD and it just comes out. I can't help it. It's really annoying. It's really difficult to deal with. So yeah, I do struggle with like saying things and interrupting people and talking too much and too fast. But then I also struggle with knowing when I'm allowed to do those things. Like when I'm allowed to talk in conversations and stuff like that. Like right now, for example, I'm talking way too much. When you're in a conversation, how often do you find yourself finishing the sentence of people you are talking to before they can finish it themselves? Oh my God, all the time. Why do people talk so slow? So with, that's like an autism and an ADHD thing, I'm sure. So with autism, I have really, really good um, pattern recognition. And with my ADHD, I'm very impulsive, but intuitive as well. And so if I'm having a conversation with someone, I already know what they're gonna say. Like I know what the end of their sentence is gonna gonna be. And w because people with without ADHD tend to talk at a regular speed and people with ADHD tend to talk quite fast because I feel like right now I'm talking regular speed, but I know that I'm probably talking really, really fast. When I am talking to like neurotypical people and they're just talking at like regular speed, to me it is so slow, but because of our brains, and I can speak for a lot of ADHD people because I know a lot of ADHD people feel the exact same way, it is just, we just do it, it just we just finish your sentence and it's not because we don't want you to finish it, it's just because our brain just gets there before you do, even though it's your sentence. But I just let people in my life know that I have ADHD, I'm very, very open about the fact that I have ADHD and I say to my friends and my family and stuff like, if I interrupt you, literally just be like, you've interrupted me. Thank you for your input, but we're going to continue the conversation. And I'm like, okay, I just needed to get it out. And that way, nobody's boundaries are being like overstepped. No one is being like left out. No one is feeling like they need to mask or anything like that because I'm still being myself and I'm still able to know that the people that I'm with know what I'm like, know my traits and know how I am as a person and they love me for it. And sometimes I'll say something and they'll just be like, yeah, yeah, and then they'll talk about it with me because they want to and other times they won't they'll say we'll talk about that in a minute we're just going to continue this and i'm like okay that's fine it's just it's nice to be surrounded with people that understand it and that understand me and are genuinely wanting to learn about adhd and wanting to learn about autism and how to help me how often do you have difficulty waiting your turn in situations when taking turn is required very often i get really impatient i don't have any perception of time and this is something that i've struggled with my entire life and i just thought it was normal and i thought everybody felt this way 
way, but I don't understand time. Weirdly enough, I was the first person in my class when I was younger to be able to tell time. Yeah, I was like six or seven when I learned how to, like when I could like actually tell time. What was I saying? I have this thing where if you tell me something is gonna take like an hour, that means absolutely nothing to me. I don't know how long an hour is. Logically, I know that an hour is 60 minutes, but what I mean is I don't know how long that feels. I don't know how long an hour is. I don't have time perception. I could not tell you how long an hour is. It's just the way that my brain is wired. I don't, I don't have a perception of time. Time for me often, if I'm bored, passes extremely slowly to the point where I don't feel like neurotypical people understand how slowly that it feels like time is passing. I could be in a queue to wait for something for like five minutes but that feels like five hours. Feels as though like just time isn't moving. And the amount of times that it feels like that in life is horrendous. And it's a really difficult thing for me to interpret and for me to understand like how time passes because I just, I don't have a perception of time. It seems like I'm impatient because to the untrained eye or to the average person, it seems like I've been waiting for like two minutes but to a person with ADHD, it feels like we've been waiting for hours. So our impatient like levels or our patient levels are a little bit less, but it's because of the way that we view time and the way that our bodies view time. If a neurotypical person was waiting in line for an hour, they would start to get frustrated because it's been an hour, but that's how long it feels to an ADHD person when it's only been a few minutes if they're waiting for something. Does, does that make sense? How often do you interrupt others when they're busy? Uh, I'll say sometimes I don't really tend to interrupt people when they're busy. I live by myself and I spend the majority of my time alone. So I don't really have anyone around me who's busy to interrupt. A score of four or more indicates that the patient has symptoms highly consistent with ADHD in adults and further investigation is warranted. And I scored six. <laughs> uh, section B score is 12. But yeah, I think that this basically says I've got ADHD shocking and i feel like this video is gonna be a huge red flag to the fact that i have adhd because i think i went off on a tangent for almost every single question and half of them didn't really was not really relevant but there you go i hope that you enjoyed this i hope that it was uh insightful and i hope that you was able to learn something you probably didn't i didn't really teach anything i hope you all have a super super good day and thanks so much for watching bye